Hey, so on this channel, we do a lot of cool stuff with 3D printers. We build 3D printers, we do a lot of projects with 3D printers, and today we're gonna to talk about a printer. We're gonna talk actually about a printer company specifically. So if you've been following along the 3D printing community the last couple days, there's been a lot of stuff going on with Bamboo Lab and their 3D printers, specifically the firmware with the 3D printers. The very short story of it all is essentially they're putting out a firmware update that is going to restrict API access to the machine, which is gonna limit how users use the machine and what sort of software and accessories can talk with their machines going forward. And a lot of people in this community are not quite happy with the direction things are going. So earlier today on a live stream, I spoke about this subject at quite a length and I put down a lot of my thoughts on it. And instead of recording the whole thing again, I'm just gonna take that segment, do some editing and put it out. So hope you enjoy and I would love to hear your feedback. And after you're done, don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers. Just to break it down, this is how you make a bad 3D printer. For those that don't know, Okay, so first things first, you make the bed leveling finicky. You have bad defaults, so the machine ships with like bad profiles and whatnot. Bad overall quality control. You have many revisions with different bugs. So like you have the Ender 3, Neo XX, YZ, Beta 2, Delta Echo, Foxtrot version 2. Mandatory mods, nothing's worse than getting a printer and then immediately having to mod it to make it work. An unreasonably slow motion system. That doesn't really happen too much anymore, but it's still a thing. You ship garbage firmware that requires replacement. That was a thing for the longest time with Marlin. Um, and even right now with Clipper, you're having to unlock Clipper to get full features out of these machines. Out of the box experience take double digit hours. So just really bad setup and initial configuration. And print reliability requires babysitting for every print job. And now we can add to the list, thanks to current events, um, removing features and locking down the ecosystem so that taking control out of the users is something we're gonna have to add to this list. Now. This is the list of how to make a bad 3D printer. How do you make a good 3D printer? Well, it's quite simple. You do not make a bad 3D printer. It's that easy. You take the previous list of things not to do and you just don't do them. And then you have a good 3D printer. Easy peasy. Can anyone explain to me why Steam is the dominant video game distribution platform in the world. What does Steam do that nobody else does? They just don't do dumb stuff. Have a, a reliable platform that has what you need and is easy to use at a good cost. Their competitors just keep shooting themselves in the foot. When everyone else is just shooting themselves in the foot, you don't really have to do much to be the dominant platform. It's not rocket appliances. Make a good thing and people will buy it. But when you make a good thing that people are buying and then you make it a bad thing, it is no longer a good thing and people stop buying it. Bamboo does a lot right. Don't get me wrong. Bamboo came into this market when people were making machines with off the shelf parts and they optimized their platform. The fact that the X1 and the P1 cost what it costs for what it is mechanically is insane. They've optimized for production. All they had to do was make the machines easy, easy to use and keep people happy. They're, they're locking their platform down, restricting API access for who knows what reason. I know I spoke with somebody who got into their an early version of their firmware and they told me, hey, there was a lot of code in there for RFID stuff that's been commented out which shows at one point they wanted to limit it to their fir their filament only. Now, was that an idea that they never even thought of bringing to fruition and it was just some code that was left over from a previous iteration, who knows, but it was there. And then, you know, when X pl X1 Plus came out and then they started changing the bootloader and everything to make it so you couldn't put custom firmware on the machine. Once the machine leaves the store, Bamboo has made their money and in their current setup. In their, in their current operation, the way that Bamboo currently operates as of now, when the machine leaves the store, when you give them their cre your credit card number and they get the machine, they have made their money. There is nothing else for them to make money on off of you. So why do they want to restrict how you're using their machine now that you have it? 
Uh, if you go, I don't have the link on me on hand because again, this is a different computer than my desktop. Um, somebody posted on their subreddit the other day, um, a link to their wiki and somebody started doing a bunch of Google translating and there's a lot of references to farm software. And in those farm software references, it references tiers, paid tiers. So we, we, why are they limiting what you're doing with the machine now that it's left? Tinfoil, oh wait, wait, no, I got the perfect hat for this. They're trying, tinfoil hat, to basically control how you use the machine now. Why would they wanna control how you use the machine now? Is it data collection? Is it profiteering? Is it locking down the ecosystem so that down the line, they, when the new machines come out, oh, these have high resolution cameras. Oh, you wanna, you wanna monitor your print remotely? Well, you know, data costs money. Data costs money. It, it costs money to run a server to send live webcam feeds to your phone with your Bamboo Handy app. That costs money. Eventually, they're gonna have to make money off that or at least have some form of profit co uh, counteracting the deep, like, cause that's a sunk cost for them. Right now, they're not making money off of you streaming your webcam. Data costs money. So are our future machines gonna have, oh, if you wanna monitor your prints remotely, it's free. But if you want to upload your prints remotely and check your webcam when you're not connected to your home network, oh, well, that's a, a $9.99 a month subscription. That's the problem, because here's the thing. They've shown they're willing to lock it down and remove features and gatekeep access. That's the thing. Will they do any of this? Hopefully not. I wish they don't, but I fear they will. Because they've shown now they can do it. They, they've, built, they've built the foundation of this type of ecosystem. And that's what I fear. I want them to make better printers for everyone. I like healthy competition in the market. But if the 3D printing market turns into the FPV market, where it's like pretty much just DJI, we don't really win when there's only one choice. That's the problem. I want healthy competition and I want machines that are easy for everyone to use and they're open for everyone to use. I see a lot of people commenting on the Bamboo subreddit, Discord and whatnot. Well, this doesn't affect me, so why should I care? And that is the biggest slippery slope in the world. You know, there, there's that, what's the story? I, you know, when they came for these people, I wasn't those person people, so I didn't speak up. And then when they came for those people, I wasn't those people, so I didn't speak up. But then one day they came for me and there was nobody left to defend me. That's the problem. If you let them get away with one thing, you let them get away with everything. Once the ball starts rolling, it's very hard to stop that ball. So what do you do? You bitch, moan, and complain. That's what we got as open source communities. You bitch, moan, and complain. You, 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 you post tweets at them, you, you fill out forms, you stop buying their machine. The amount of comments I got from people that say, hey, I'm running print farms with bamboo printers. Yeah, we're not buying these anymore. We're gonna use the machines they have and when they stop working, we're gonna replace them with non-bamboo machines, right? There goes 50, 50 unit sales, who knows? Times however many people. Because like, if you're relying on these machines for your business, imagine one day you walk in and they all auto updated firmware and now they don't work with your farm management software. Like your SOL as a company. It, it, it's not that what they're doing, you know, the, it, it shouldn't be this way. They are, they are put, and here's the thing. They're claiming it's for security. There are open source ways of doing this. Uh, Auth2, I, I, I'm not a programming guy at all. Uh, OAuth2, yeah, OAuth2. There are open source ways that they can implement these security features that will protect the printers protect their network and still allow people to run their third-party software uh, that connects and talks to the printers. So the fact that they're straight up not doing that is an immediate red flag that this is not just about security. Simple as that. Because, you know, well, why are you doing that? But why are you also adding this, all this other stuff there? Well, it's for security. Yeah, but you could have just done it this way and not have to mess with all that. They could be like, if you watch the stream regularly, I, if you've noticed my opinion on Bamboo has been softening. I've been promoting, not promoting, but I've been recommending their printers more and more lately.
because they are very good printers for newbies to this to this you know hobby but that's pretty much going to stop now because I'm not going to recommend a printer to somebody who comes to me in good faith and asks me to recommend a machine. I'm not going to recommend them a machine that I can't guarantee in one year will behave the way it behaves today. We have to hold their feet to the fire for this kind of behavior because this behavior that they're doing now leads to things that are not better for the consumer down the line. The only people this benefits are the bottom line of the company. And guess what? They're doing just fine right now. They were doing just fine a year ago. Well, actually about a year ago, they had the A1 recall issue, but otherwise like they they make a good machine. Just keep making a good machine. Don't F with people's ability to use the tool. These are tools. Let people use the tool the way they want to use it. And guess what? When you make a good machine that people want to use because it works with a lot of stuff, they buy more machines. There's a reason people use Steam more than the Epic Game Store. It's easier to use, it's more user friendly, and it doesn't bullshit you around. It just works, is an extremely valid sales tactic. In their blog post, they're like, oh, don't worry, we're working to talk with third party apps like Orca Slicer. And then Orca Slicer put an update out today where they're like, yeah, no, dog, they straight up denied us. We're not allowed to use the API key. They're bringing heat on themselves and it's not benefiting anyone because it's not about security. They could have implemented these security patches without restricting access. So that immediately tells me it's about locking down the ecosystem so they have more control over it so they can potentially do more things to it. Just make a good printer that people like using and people will keep buying your printer. You, they, they sell like hotcakes. So why 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 are you you're, you're pulling us around like this? Why why are you doing this? Because it's it's not for security. We've established that. It's it's straight up about control. <laughs> Is X1 Plus dead? No. Um, I was talking with the X1 Plus people yesterday. They're the X1 Plus people has had more people join their Discord in the past like two days than like the past year. <laughs> uh, and I actually they sent me their board. That I have the X1 Plus board. It's in my computer room upstairs. I got the expander board for the X1. And then I also have a Diamondback nozzle from Bamboo or from uh, E3D. So guess what? At some point in the near future, we're gonna be taking this off the shelf and I'm gonna be doing upgrades on it. But this thing does not talk to the internet. This is running X1 Plus and it's completely firewalled from the internet. I won't let this thing on the internet. I don't trust it anymore. So Bamboo, do better, please. Please do better. Make better machines. Don't take away people's features. Don't mess with how people use their tools. People that use tools have a workflow. And when you mess with the workflow, it sucks. I, I, I'm a mold maker by trade. I have my tools in my toolbox the way they are and I use them the way I use them because that's how I use them. When you add a step in between, I'm not gonna slice something with Orca, export the 3MF file, open Bamboo Connect, upload the file to Bamboo Connect, go, oh wait, I, I accidentally, I gotta change a setting, load back up Orca Slicer, re-slice it, re-export the 3MF, and then reload it up to my, no! You're making it annoying on purpose. It benefits nobody. Just, just make a good machine that's good and easy to use and people can use it the way they want and it'll sell good. Because if you don't do that, there's ulterior motives in place which we believe we you might be setting up for some stuff that people aren't gonna like. So it is what it is. Do better, please. I want to keep recommending your machines. They are good machines for you newbies. But I can't recommend a machine that I don't know how the machine will behave in a year because of your updates and your changes. Because you've shown now that you're willing to change stuff on us and remove features that we like. So yeah. There you go. That's my bamboo spiel. Like, comment, subscribe.